Welcome to the Jace Company YouTube channel, the benchmark for industrial spare parts. Today, we take you on a journey through desalination, a fascinating topic for many industries and many countries. You may know that water covers 71% of our planet's surface. However, only 2.5% is fresh water. And now, the plot twist, less than 1% of all of this water is drinkable and accessible. Imagine being in an arid region where fresh water is a rare and precious resource. In such a place, thinking of the immense expanse that is the sea, you might ask, what if we could make salt water drinkable? The solution exists and is called desalination. This process allows salt to be removed from seawater, turning it into drinkable water, ready to be used. An industrial desalination plant can be an imposing and complex plant, but there are also much smaller facilities, used on an industrial level, that employ different technologies to separate salt from water. The two main techniques for making salt water fresh are distillation and reverse osmosis. In the various types of distillation processes, heat is given to the salt water to make it evaporate, that is, to change from liquid to a gaseous state. In evaporation, only the water molecules evaporate while the salts remain dissolved in the water in the liquid state. The water vapor obtained is then brought back to the liquid state through condensation, thus obtaining distilled water that is 100% pure water. This is an effective but highly energy-intensive method Heating water to accelerate its evaporation is no easy feat given its specific heat capacity. Therefore, it can be very expensive to create all the thermal energy required. In some situations, it may be considered impractical compared to the reverse osmosis desalination technique. Reverse osmosis, also known as hyperfiltration, is the most widely used technique worldwide. Here's how the system works. Seawater initially passes through three membranes in a pretreatment phase. The first, a microfiltration membrane with pores smaller than 10 micrometers, retains the sand and other debris. The second, an ultrafiltration membrane, blocks bacteria. The third, a nanofiltration membrane, prevents the passage of sulfates. At this point, the water is clean, but it is still salty. Now the most important filtration takes place, the one that separates the salt from the water. The water is pressurized between 55 and 70 bar and is pushed towards a special semi-permeable membrane with pores of about 0.1 nanometers. It is composed of several layers, the most important of which is an aromatic polyamide, which plays the real role of separation. The membrane operates in a cross flow, that is, the liquid to be filtered flows parallel to the surface of the filter, and only part of the liquid passes through it, while the rest continues to flow, carrying away the retained salts. This method helps to keep the filter cleaner and improve filtration efficiency. This produces a very pure water commonly known as osmosis water, to which mineral salts are added to make it perfect for human consumption, or to be used in the food industry, irrigation, pharmaceutical industry, and many other processes. Reverse osmosis desalination reverses the natural process of osmosis. In normal osmosis, water passes through a semi-permeable membrane from an area of low solute concentration to an area of high concentration to balance the concentrations. In reverse osmosis, high pressure is applied to the salt water pushing the water through a membrane and leaving the salts behind. Thus, forcing the water in the opposite direction leads to desalination, hence the name reverse osmosis. Of course, as we have learned from all of our previous videos, everything that brings an advantage has a cost and a disadvantage, especially if it works against the nature of things. So let us see what the issues are. First, the cost of membranes is high, and they deteriorate over time due to high pressures. However, technology is constantly advancing, offering better and better components. In this context, J's can supply the filters and the membranes needed to ensure efficient and constant supply of desalination plants. Being able, with its decades of experience in industrial supplies, to identify the best available alternative. 
The second huge cost is the amount of energy required for pumping and pressurization processes, which depends on the concentration of salts and contaminants in the water. The higher the concentrations and more contaminants, the more energy is required. This energy may come from renewable resources such as solar or hydroelectric power, but also from electricity supplied by conventional power plants, which may be powered by fossil fuels or nuclear energy. Thus, the cost of reverse osmosis desalination varies greatly depending on many factors, including the cost of energy. The newest and best reverse osmosis desalters consume around 2.8 kilowatts per cubic meter of water produced, compared to 20 kilowatts per cubic meter needed in the 1970s and 1980s. So the price today is between 1 half and 3 euros per cubic meter of water. Other important costs are the construction of the plant and the transport of the water once it's produced. The main disadvantage, which is the reason why in some cases desalination plant production is abandoned, is what remains as a byproduct, a very salty water called brine, which is effectively a waste product. It poses an environmental problem if discharged into the sea, since by raising the salinity of the place where it is released, it can alter the balance of marine ecosystems and affect marine life. Some projects seek solutions to reduce the environmental impact of brine, such as targeted dilution with seawater at strategic points, or treatment to reduce its salt concentration before discharge. Desalination is a particularly popular process in countries that do not have abundant freshwater resources, but are rich in seawater, such as Spain, where as much as 56% of fresh water comes from reverse osmosis desalination plants. Globally, there are more than 18,000 desalination plants in operation, serving more than 300 million people. The largest desalination plant in the world is located in Saudi Arabia and is capable of producing over 1 million cubic meters of fresh water per day. These plants are extraordinary examples of engineering and innovation. Desalination plant technology is constantly adopting, with the adoption of new technologies such as energy recovery systems and advanced membranes. These innovations are improving plant efficiency, reducing operating costs and environmental impact, and increasing freshwater production. Membranes and filters inside of desalters require regular maintenance and periodic replacement to ensure optimal operation. With over 10 years of experience in the industrial supply industry, Jays specializes in filter systems with the supply of high-quality membranes and filters. We offer full support in choosing the right hydraulic pump, filtration systems, or even single components such as a specific filter. With an extensive catalog of products from leading brands and manufacturers, we guarantee excellent results for your filtration systems with efficient service in terms of price, delivery time, and worldwide shipping. If you found this video useful, let us know by leaving a like and a comment. Also, please share it. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We recommend you visit our website, jayscompany.com, to learn more about our upcoming projects.